diesel outside It looks like he My name is Andrew Holmes. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Abilene, Texas. I first started playing guitar when I was 18. Um, I was a senior in high school. It was my last semester of high school, and um, I was dating a girl at the time that I wanted to write a song for, so I needed an outlet to do that. So I went to a old family friend of ours, and his, his name is Bobby Deegan. He's a real hippie guy, pretty cool guy. He, um, he showed me a couple chords, and uh, from that I just learned a couple songs, and really liked it, I don't know. I wanted to have an instrument to be able to put lyrics to. Um, lyrics were really important to me and they still are. Um, I listened to a lot of Iron and Wine back in the day and he was one of my biggest inspirations for, for lyricism and he's got a lot of like poetic, um, really cool ways of phrasing things and then like metaphors that describe scenarios but not, not in a very clear way, more in a vague way that's applicable. To, to anybody listening to the song. So that was really, really important to me. But um, it's, the reason I picked up a guitar was because of first wanting to have an outlet for lyricism. So. I've been thinking long and hard, my darling About just what we are and what we are But I'm lost in love I can't get enough of you with the future I don't know Weirdly, I had no intention to, to be a musician um, at all, but it, it was I just kind of fell into it uh, like a lot of things you know, in life you just kind of fall into them So I guess just the love of it kept pushing me to do more and more with it. And then I got my first gig at, at Mezumi's. It wasn't really a gig, it was just like my first time to perform in front of people. And really enjoyed it and then I just started trying to play as many places as I could and eventually people started paying me for it and it turned into one thing after another and it just then now that's all I do. In the house with A. Holmes. I don't like that name. <laughs> It's, it's still kind of weird to me, like, when people come up to me and are like, like, oh, you're Andrew Holmes, which doesn't happen often at all. But when it does, like, um, I'm usually just really honored by it. Like, like yeah, I am, and how do you know? Like, you know, because I just, like, when I'm playing shows or whatever, it's just, it's kind of just me up there. I feel like me against the world a little bit, just kind of singing my own songs. And, you know, a lot of times I'm background music, so it's nice to feel recognized. Um, when people come up and say something like that's really nice. But uh, it's definitely not expected at all, and um, I guess that's what makes it more special. So this is the crib. Uh, I'm upstairs. 
This is the Wagstaff building. I know next to nothing about it. It's really old. But it's got great acoustics in here. Sometimes I come in here and I practice. Uh, just because you hear the sound back really well. So I'm, uh, I'm in the process of making my next album. So these are just kind of, this whole area is dedicated to building my team and all the people who are going to be working with me and uh, helping me with, with the, uh, the album and all that goes into that. So like the uh, graphic design, um, marketing, business, producers, um, musicians, different studio options that I might use. Um, ways of contacting new musicians, the songs that are going to be on there, uh, funds, how to uh, raise money for it and get sponsorships and all that stuff. So that's all this over here. Yeah, so all these are places that I've checked into and the check mark means that I've emailed them and um, sent them a date and, uh, and uh, see if they can confirm it back and all that stuff. And then these here are uh, I have four phases in which uh, I'm doing to start my album, get that going. And so phase one uh, is talking about studio and recording and uh, videography. So I've got details about studios and, um, you know, videographers like this guy right here. He's pretty dope. So uh, this bottle, when I got to open up for David Ramirez on September 25th of 2015, uh, he always, in his contract, he has a bottle of Jameson for him and his band for every single show that he plays. And that night, uh, me and him and John uh, all finished this bottle together in his band. And then we all signed it and he gave it to me, which is really cool. Um, David is one of my like all-time favorite artists, though. So for me, I was flying on the moon. I've got a nice little setup here. I've been pretty blessed with it, so. Hey, what you got cooking? How about cooking something up with me? Cook it up, man. Abilene's different than a lot of places, and I don't know if it's because I'm biased, because I've grown up here, um, but I, I've gotten to play quite a few places, different cities and states, and and Abilene's just got like a totally different vibe, like everything is really upbeat and happy here, the people all are kind of creatively working towards something, and um, everyone here is really unique, I feel like and there's kind of a mutual respect for people kind of doing their own thing because they're unique in their own way. So maybe that acceptance is what's special about Abilene. Um, but yeah, Abilene's, Abilene's a really nice town. Mm. Is there, there's ladders? Yeah, uh, there's cutters on that shelf right there, and there should be ladders on the tree. But if you can't find the ladder, then, okay. So I used to used to do uh, acoustic sessions in old abandoned warehouses, and before the mill was the mill, uh, we broke in through a window. We didn't break the window. We came in through a window. We basically went in through an old open window downstairs, and walked up the stairs to the second layer up here, uh, the one with all the open windows, and. Uh, and then we, we got a, a bunch of really awesome shots as we did like an acoustic session sort of thing with the sun peeking through right in the golden hour. Uh, and it was really cool. And then we walked down and uh, smelled somebody smoking a cigar and uh, it happened to be Gary McDowell, the owner of the mill now. And he was like, what are y'all doing up there? And we're like, oh, you know, just like playing music and... So I, started, I ended up sitting with him for like an hour and a half or something, playing a few tunes, and um, 
It's really cool. And then he hired me to play music for the opening night, which was, was really cool because I expected to like him call the cops or something. But got a gig out of it. give a big hand to my good friend Jonathan Hester uh, every time he plays magic happens we got uh, one more with the duo here so me and John um, I don't really he's more of my brother than uh, than just a friend he and I are just real close quite often though we'll go out and uh, just go support other musicians and uh, we go to concerts out of town a lot and uh, we write together a lot and do a lot of practicing. Most everything that we do is pretty music oriented though. Um, and that's really cool because it's it's like having an accountability partner where you're both kind of feeding off of each other's creativity and um, you know, saying like, well, I like this and I don't like this. And you've got that honesty and that uh, trust that says that it's like, what I'm saying to you is not something that I'm saying to cut you down at all, it's, it's because I think that you can do better, or um, I think that you'll know that I'm being honest whenever I say that this is really awesome. So um, it's really cool to have that kind of honesty in a friendship, but then also in uh, musicianship, because honesty is one of the best gifts you can give a musician. But um, I, I finally hit this high note. Uh, the high note now I met Andrew and he was already kind of doing the playing around Abilene thing and I was like well I want to do that I want to get into doing that I only play at open mic nights and so he kind of helped me get my foot in the door and we were this duo of individual artists and it uh, confused the hell out of everybody but you know we've, we've made it work it's it certainly made me um, modulate my bellowing, so to speak, instead of screaming like I used to. I've been able to just uh, really say what I need to say, and he's helped me do that as a fantastic lyricist. As you know, with, with and what we do and how far it's actually taken us, you know, we've had to hold each other accountable in a lot of different ways, and. Um, We've definitely made each other better men for it and gone through a lot of hard times where we've screamed at each other and a lot of great times where we've gotten really happy and sad and cried together and drank about that much. But, uh. Definitely like an old married couple sometimes. Yeah. That definitely shows. But there have been times where I've rubbed his belly and he was sick. Yeah, that was <laughs> an interesting time. That was a funny, funny moment. <laughs> call to go to Nashville was to try to pursue something bigger than than home I guess I don't know it just there was a lot of things again it was one of those things I just kind of fell into it felt right to do and I just got it in my head where I was like like this is what I need to be doing so these are photos from Nashville um, I got to meet Foy Vance he's one of my favorite artists um, that was really cool. He's a cool guy. And uh, this is a picture of my favorite spot to hike and camp. This one's at Fall Creek Falls. And it was like, I think it was 270 feet or something like that, uh, that the waterfall was. And this little thing right here, that's me. And I even drew a little map to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was really cool. Went camping there quite often. You know, I went through a lot of hardship there, but it was 
the whole time I knew that I was like, it was an era of my life I was supposed to live out. And I don't know. I, it, it just was kind of a gut thing, to be honest with you. I didn't know anybody going up there, so that was kind of nerve wracking. But it was something also I think I guess I needed to prove to myself that I could do and go be an artist that lives and competes in a, a bigger pond, I guess, if that makes any sense. This was when I was living up there in Nashville. This is one of my closest friends. He's a really cool guy. Uh, his name was Doug, but everyone calls him the Doug because he's the one and only. Uh, super hippie guy. This was a this was a house show I got to do in Nashville. That was super cool. There was like a very intimate crowd that night, and um, it was very neat. That was one of my favorite places I've ever played. Yeah, I got, I got a bunch of stuff from Nashville, though. There was, I got this cooler at a thrift shop there and just, like, put a bunch of stickers on it. This was Eastside Music Supply, uh, which is the place I always went to get strings or anything like that. They had these really cool strings there that were hand-woven strings. And I got this cap at uh, a little shop in Nashville. But uh, a lot of people when I was up there in Nashville... I remember asking them like, what's your goal with music? And most of their answers was like, I'd just love to live off of music. And it hit me one day that I was like, I've been living off of music for like four years now in a small town. And that like, that is everyone's goal here. They moved to Nashville to do it, but they're only raising the stakes and making it a lot more difficult on themselves. So I moved back home and I'm technically now I'm living the dream and it's a whole lot more fun now and I've had a whole lot more success with living in Abilene than I ever did in Nashville because I'm able to travel and use the connections I made in Nashville while being able to afford a place and live off of doing the things I love to do here. So that's been a huge benefit of living in Abilene. It took me moving away and coming back to realize how special it was. But people like to refer to it as a black hole, but it's really not. It's pretty cool. <laughs> they just are in denial about loving it. <laughs>